So in this case, uh, I want us to consider another typical uh, example uh, of our Norton's uh, theorem. Remember, we managed to have our basics of our Norton's theorem. Uh, what you need actually to end up with uh, the current that is flowing across the load from any network that you are given, you can obtain the equivalent circuit diagram of this nature where you need the Norton's current, which is the short circuit current, and also your RN, uh, which is your Norton's resistance. So in this case, we are given uh, a simpler question. Calculate, uh, in this case, calculating the current with two voltages you are given them. Use Norton's theorem to calculate the value of the current flowing through the load resistor RL and the voltage drop across that resistor. So we need the voltage drop also. Okay, as we had before the stages or the steps that you need, remember I said you need to calculate the short circuit current where you short the load resistor. So in this case, you are going to short RL and calculate what? And calculate the Norton's current, which is our short circuit current. So by shorting this, we have a straight line here, like, like this. There's, there's, there's nothing there. So it's, it was going to be like this. I want you to see how the diagram was going to look like. So do not worry that you've got two voltage sources. We understand from our simplification how these currents are related. So there, we're going to short this one. That will be a straight line, this one. Okay, meaning to say the other part will remain as it is this other side, voltage, uh, resistance as it is. So as you can see, this is our V1, this is our R1, our V2, R2, and so on, with their values as they are here. The short circuit current, guys, is this current that is across here. That is where our short circuit current, which is our Norton's current. What is it representing on this diagram? We will look at the diagram. It is the current. When you short the current all in this branch here, all of this current that is flowing here, from I will, will go this side. All of this current, from they will go there. So meaning to say it is the combination of that one. Remember, this is positive, positive. So the current uh, flowing in this direction is going to be I1. And this side is going to be from V2 is going to be I2. They are entering all this kitchen of slope. So meaning to say our IN is going to be the sum of I1 and I2. So the question is, where are we going to have our I1 and our I2? From this V1 and R1, we can calculate I1, which is simply V1 over R1. So V1, that is 7, over R1, which is 6, just like that. So it's going to be 1, 1, 6, 7 uh, amps. So the current there, we have it. Uh, that will be 1, 1, 6, 7 amps. To calculate I2, simply use V2 and R2 there. So I2 can be calculated V2 over R2, just like that. Our V2 it was 12, R2 it was 10. So that's 12 divided by 10, which is going to be uh, 1,2 amps. So that is what we have. So there is 1,2 amps. So that means our Norton's current, which is the short circuit current, these currents flowing, all they will be joined there. They'll be entering that the, this part. Because there's a short here. So all the currents will be flowing towards that. So it will be the sum of these. We simply add 1.167 plus 1,2. So that was going to give us 2,3 uh, six, seven amps as our Norton's current. All right. So that's it. We move on to the calculation of the Norton's resistance. All right, so let us just put this as our RN. Just going to write it aside. Uh, so this is a short circuit current, I mean, which is our IN. Just going to write aside 2,367 amps. All right, so let's see what we can do. Can even just, okay, no problem. Let's just work it from the original diagram and see. Remember, in order for you now to 
calculate RN. This is what you need from your diagram this time to calculate RN. You should second it before, but this time you're going to have those points A and B. So you open that part so that we've got A and B. All the voltages short circuited replaced with their internal resistances. Remember that. So meaning to say we're going to have R1 like this. Just like how you calculated it under RATEV. When you're calculating with TEV, your RATEV, the same way. Your RN, your RATEV are the same. Same way that you calculated. So this was your R1. Uh, this was your R2, so across the points A and B, we can see that our Rn will be product over some uh, par parallel. I explained about that before. So that's our Rn there, which is same as our Rtf. So that is, we're going to use product over some of these two there in parallel, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's it. So this is our R1, guys, which is the 6 ohms. The R2 which is the 10 ohms. So you're simply going to need the product over some of this. So that's our Rn. So in this case, it was going to be 6 versus 10, 6 by 10 over 6 plus 10. All right, that is going to give us 3,75 ohms. So with this as our Rn, uh, 3,75, and that short circuit current that we had, which is our Norton's current. Together, we're going to put this into the equivalent circuit diagram now. So remember, your equivalent circuit diagram, uh, as we had before, the, the short circuit current and IN, they will be in parallel. They will be in parallel. Then we're going to have our RL like that. So that's it. Um, let's see what you're going to have at the end. So you need that diagram. So you're going to have your current. Like I said, you can put an arrow like that for the current, or you can indicate it like this. It's up to you guys the way that you want to have your current indicated. That's our Norton's current um, to the load resistor here yeah, across the points A and B. That is where our load resistor was connected here yeah, between A and B. So that is where our RL is. All right, so that is it, guys. Our IN is there, uh, 2,367 amps. Our RN is there. We calculated this, uh, 3,75 ohms. 3,75 ohms. Our RL is that load resistor from our diagram where we are calculating here, which is 20 ohms. So we have our load resistor which is 20 ohms in that case. So that's it. We can calculate the current across the load resistor IL, which is the one that we are being asked there. So meaning to say IL is simply going to be from the current divider rule, opposite resistor RN, over the sum of those resistors RN and RL, the ones that this current is to be shared, it is gonna flow into these two. So according to this branch, one this side, one this side. So you multiply to that I n, just like that. So that's it, guys. Our load current uh, was going to be 3,75, opposed to resistor R n, 3,75, over the sum of these two, uh, 3,75 plus 20 times our I n, which is 2,367 amps, which is our Norton's current in that case. So this was going to give us I l, which is 0, 0,374 uh, seven, amps, just like that. And from there, you can even calculate whatever that you need, the voltage, whatever that you're given there. They now they want you to also calculate the voltage drop across that resistor, across R l. So if across RL here, if across this RL, we have a current, because across, this is the current that we calculated. So if across this RL, we've got a current of 0, 0.374 and a resistance there, how can we calculate the voltage? We can calculate the voltage 
Remember voltage, current times resistance. So meaning to say the voltage across RL is going to be the load current times our RL. So that's it. So there's just going to substitute our load current 0, 0.374 uh, times the load resistance that we are given of 20. That was going to give us uh, 7,48 volts. That is uh, the, 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 the voltage that we are going to hear from there. So each and every part, as we can see, you have to consider the equivalent circuit in each and every part that you have. The equivalent circuit will be needed. You will need the equivalent circuit. So let's revise all our theorems and understand each and every equivalent circuit in each theorem that you're going to have. 